Hey friends, I'm coming to you from my kitchen today. It is July 13th. It's about a million and a half degrees outside. I've already got my bathing suit on. After this, I'm jumping in the pool because honestly, it's too hot here in Central Virginia to do anything else. Um, so anyways, I just want to do a quick video um, following up on when to pick your kakutsa. You know, the one thing I've noticed all over uh, YouTube is people growing kakutsas and they have these armfuls of these huge, massive baseball bat sized kakutsas. Um, you know, they're so easy to grow, they're so fun to grow, um, but not a lot of people talk to you about the difference of when to pick them. The thing with kakutsa is bigger is not always better. They are always going to be long. Even a small kakutsa very thin kakutsa, you know, no thicker than a quarter is still going to be a good 18 inches long. Once your kakutsa gets to about 18 inches long, that's when you really need to start keeping an eye on it because within a matter of anywhere from, you know, two, three, four days, it's going to get to be about like this. As you can see, this one is still nice and tender. It's long. The tip is still a little pointed. It's not quite rounded yet. You know, in one more day, it would have been rounded off nicely. Um, as you can see though, within maybe two days from this, it starts to get quite a lot thicker. You know, once it starts to reach its length, it's just gonna, ex you're, you're not gonna believe how fast it starts to grow um, from that point on. And if you don't pick it within a matter of days, you can go from this to something that's almost inedible. Now, I say that lightly because the fact is, is no matter what, kakutsa is a gourd, but it's very much like zucchini, you know, squash, where you can cut it up, take the seeds out, use the leftover flesh, you know, and cook it up. But the seeds of kakutsa are very large and very fibrous, and there is a major difference in texture that happens in just a few days from when you have this nice kind of floppy kakutsa until it starts to get more stiff. Um, so anyways, I cut one open and I want to show you the difference. So here's a kakutsa um, that I left on the vine just a little bit longer than I would have liked. It was about the size of a baseball bat. Um, and this is the center portion where it starts to get from thick to thin. And I want to show you the difference. As you can see down here in the thicker part, we have the seeds starting to form. Um, and there are a lot of them. That's one cut in half. But you can see they're still fairly tender. You know, I can snap it with my fingernail. If I put it in a hot, hot pan, it'll cook down. Um, but if you look at the thinner side here, where the diameter is much thinner, as you can see, the texture is much spongier, it's not quite as firm, and the seeds are, you know, they're almost nothing compared to the thicker end of the kakutsa. It's starting to get firmer. The seeds are getting quite a lot larger. Um, these seeds, you know, if I'd let this go two more days, these would be very hard. I wouldn't want to eat these seeds. These are probably, at this point, about the last day where they'd be tender enough that if I cooked them down in a pan, um, they wouldn't be crunching in my meal when I eat them. All right, hopefully that close-up helped you guys out a little bit. Um, by no means is a large kakutsa inedible. Don't go throwing it in your compost pile or anything like that. You know, you're just going to have to cut it up and pay a little more attention to de-seeding it. But the reason I made this video is because when I first started growing kakutsa, there was not a lot of kakutsa videos on YouTube. I really only found two that were very helpful, and I've noticed that those two are still the top two um, kakutsa videos, and they still are very helpful, um, but there wasn't really much anything other than a lot of pictures of people holding these gigantic, you know, baseball bat-sized kakutsas and having these huge harvests. So I assumed, you know, like so many, that bigger is better, you know. Bigger food, you know, more food for my family, that's great, larger harvest. But I have some wonderful Sicilian friends who own the most incredible pizza restaurant here in town, and their father is from Sicily, and he's, you know, he barely speaks English, and I brought them kakutsa last year, and I was so excited to gift it to them, and they were so excited um, to get it for me, because honestly, he hadn't seen any since, you know, in, in years and years, you know, since he'd gone home. So um, I brought them the first one, and it was probably about this size, and they were real stoked and thankful, and then I brought them another one that was quite a lot bit larger later, thinking they were going to be blown away. And Frank didn't want to be rude, but he basically said to me, he said, when they get this big, they're no good. He's like, there's too many seeds. They just, it's just not as good. And we'll thank you. We'll save this one. We'll save the seeds and plant them next year, but you should really pick them smaller. And, you know, he told me about his family's recipe where they like to make this traditional soup. I've yet to make it because it's about a thousand degrees here. I'm not making soup in the summer. I don't know about you. 
but that does not sound appetizing to me. So I use these in place of zucchini and any number of different kinds of squash in most of what I make with them. And my daycare kids honestly love to munch on them raw. Um, so anyways, taking Frank's advice this year, I let two or three of them go a little too long. Um, the first ones of the season, you know, they were starting to get big and then I was like, all right, a couple more days. Well, I waited a day or two too long and they got extra large. So that's why I have, you know, this example to show you. Nowhere near as large as I let them go last year though. But, so I've been experimenting about when to pick them and right about here is definitely the prime stage, you know, that I believe. Any smaller than this, you're not getting a lot of flesh off, you know, from the vegetable itself. Any bigger than this, you start to get a lot of seeds. So in between, you know, these two sides, these two widths, as you can see, that is the perfect um, size to grow your kakutsa to and then get it off the vine. If you end up with some that you missed that end up overgrowing, you know, you can chop them in half. A lot of times this top set, the top section, like you saw in this piece, is still a lot more tender than the bottom and you can always put the bottom out in the sun, let it dry out and save the seeds for next year. Um, I had a very good germination rate with these this year, unlike last year where I just planted them in the ground the way I would with squash. This year, I nicked the seeds with my um, toenail clippers, put them in a damp paper towel, and put them in a plastic bag, and I germinated them that way, and they did phenomenal. So this year, I'm um, able to not just only bring my Sicilian friends some kakuta, but I also brought them some seeds and a nice little um, seedling that Frank's father was super excited about. So anyways, um, this is the most exciting time of the year in the garden as far as I'm concerned. I know it's hot. It can be discouraging. The bugs are coming. Sometimes, you know, you go on vacation, you don't water, you come home and you just want to give up. But I please do not be discouraged. Do not give up. If you can power through the next, you know, four weeks of heat and bugs, you, you know, you're going to have an incredible growing season, you know, August, September, October, as it starts to cool off because your plants were able to you know, weather the storm, make it over that summer hump, and um, it's just gonna really extend your growing season, and you'll be so satisfied and happy with the amount of food that you're able to harvest. This, I harvest, you know, this is my garlic that I overwintered, you know, it took a while to, um, to mature, and then I picked it, and I've let it dry out in the yard for about two or three weeks, and I made my first ever garlic braid. Um, yesterday which I'm super excited about and today was the first day that the large tomatoes are finally coming in we've had a couple small ones um, for a few you know a week or two um, but it's now hot enough here in Central Virginia that where the big boys are coming so it's a great time of year uh, in the garden and in the kitchen as well since we get to cook with all this fresh food that we grew so I hope you guys like this video I hope it helped you out if you have any kakuta recipes to share please put them down in the comments because I'd love to try them out and um you know please like subscribe share hit the bell all that stuff you know that really helps out my channel and i appreciate you guys watching and i hope you come back soon because there's going to be a lot more uh gardening to talk about and if you're interested in sewing i have lots of sewing videos as well and if you're interested in selling what you sew i've got videos on that too so if you're new please subscribe and if you're returning thanks so much for coming back and i hope to see you guys soon